culture and, and commerce and all of it kind of intersecting. What better place than the barbershop? You know, that's where it all comes together. It feels good to be here with Genius at the Swag Shop, sponsored by Tito's Handmade Vodka. I mean, we ain't got no choice but to celebrate life, community, yeah. culture. Appreciate you having me in the shop today, man. Cheers. 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 It's Tito's, man. After you done toured the world with Outkast and had this whole career going on, what was it that made you say, you know what, it's time for me to get my entrepreneurship. But I always wanted to open a barbershop. Bell and Wilder Barbershop on Simpson Road, down yeah. the street from Lincoln Cemetery, was a barbershop I grew up going to. And Mr. Bell and Mr. Wilder was just, they was a community institution. So Mr. Bell and Mr. Wilder gave me the inspiration. I bought my first barbershop site unseen over Craigslist. Shay didn't talk to me for about two weeks. Yeah. But I learned my lessons in that one, and about four years later, she bought me this one down on Edgewood for my birthday. Mm -hmm. Now we have one at State Farm Arena, about a mile down that way. And we're about to expand into three more. So we're about to get in the suburbs too, so we. Come on now, I mean, but when you opening up at State Farm Arena, yeah. and you're all over the city at the same time, I mean, what are the keys to running a successful business like the Swag Shop? So my thing is bring the culture of, like all the stuff that I already have in a barbershop. Come on Folks come in and selling clothes, folks tell them about the news, folks come in and say, I want to shoot a video. We are, we are masquerading as a barbershop, but this is a center for culture, for swagger. Come on You know, for, for commerce. I believe I want the kids to come in, see art, get inspired. I want trades people to be seen yeah. respectfully, you know what I mean? I want the trades to be respected, so I try my best to move in that area. How do you feel being able to do business in your community, in your hometown? That's what I saw growing yeah. up, so I'm mean, you're gonna do what you see. Come on now. I grew up in the same neighborhood as Herman Russell. You know, I grew up knowing the legend of Alonzo Herman. Facts. I grew up, I grew up seeing black business people and entrepreneurs like Alex Yitwan. Atlanta is a very unique city in that it has grown its own reinvestors. That's right. And when you look at what Jeezy owns in terms of a real estate portfolio, what he's been able to do, what I'm seeing in Atlanta is an example for other cities to, I'm seeing that what Magic Johnson has been able to do in LA has been able to do on a microcosm here and eventually it's gonna happen on a macrocosm. You have people like John Hope Bryant who owned more rental properties than any other black man in, in America yeah. is now a personal friend and mentor to people like me and Tip. Oh, Liz, Liz right, right here in Atlanta. You, you have opportunity abounding. Noel Khalil, God bless the dead, who's a personal friend and mentor to me and Tip. Yeah. Affordable housing and beyond. So for, with the Columbia Group, with me, I'm seeing something in Atlanta, the Russell family. Look at what yeah. they've done. Now created a center and technology center right. for young people to learn coding and more. Right there on North Side Drive, right down the street from the, from the stadium. So for me, man, Atlanta has the potential, if we keep our nose to the grindstone, to be an example city, to grow more cities like this. Yeah. And within the next 100 years, I would expect to see more of this. Your name is gonna go down right next to all of those oh, names. Oh man, I'd be so no, blessed. No, no, that's so what blessed. it is, Mike, I'd because be not so many blessed. people get a chance to stand up yeah. for the community. Yeah. Be well-spoken and articulate. <laughs> Come on now. Okay now, Mike, we gotta get into this album. Yeah, Mike. This Michael album now. I mean, you know, it's being critically acclaimed as one of the greatest albums of the year. I mean, I'm gonna have to slide into one of my all-time categories, no, okay? I, I got my soul food, and right now I got Michael right yeah, next to it, sir. Why was now the time to get back in? The world shut down for three years. I used those three years to record stuff that had been on my mind. If you listen to Down By Law, the first track on the album, with Me CeeLo, produced by Corey Moe. Come on now. I started that uh, free, as a freestyle the year Obama, was his last year of his presidency. Yeah. So that's how long I had had certain thoughts and ideas. Mike, you know, I ain't even gonna lie, my partner said I already called and said, hey man, Mike got a song called Motherless on there that's going crazy. You know, when you said you won't believe it, mama, I achieved she it, mama. Man. I turned these hating ass people into she believers, believers mama. Man. When I heard that, that just kind of struck me deep in my soul. Yeah, yeah. Because we all know that our mother knows, you know, those restless nights and those dreams yeah. and those visions that we have, and they share them with us. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. My grandmother died at 79 years old in my arm. I understood by watching my grandmother that once the pain hit, it never leaves. So my grandmother died, you know, it felt as though my mother died because my grandmother raised me. And I remember having an argument with my mother, sassing her, you know, telling her. And she said, you know, I, you don't know what it took for me to give you to my mother when she asked you. And said, you know, but one day I'm gonna be gone and you gonna see. And she wasn't lying. The day she left, I, I, there's an emptiness in my heart that I'd never be able to fulfill. And I wish I could call her, just cry and laugh and say, I get you, Denise. 
On a lighter note, scientists and engineers, man. I mean, what was it about that particular track that made you say, let me get Andre three racks and future on this thing? It matters to me what Big and um, Dre and mm -hmm. Regina Davenport, it matters to me what they think because they gave me an opportunity to change my life. She was a and &R. Of course, they were the owners and they, they believed in me. So I care what they think. So I let them hear. Like, I let them hear the Run the Jewels records. I let them hear the Solo Killer Mind. I just, just tell me what you think. Yeah. And um, Dre asked, could he come back the next day? When he came back, he brought something. He brought music. He said, well, pick, some, pick what you like, you know, and, and, and see if you can do something with it. Yeah. And that was one of the ones. Yeah, another bang on there that I love was that Exit 9. For those who don't know, Exit yeah. 9 is the West Side, that's Adamsville, that's Flatland, right. you know. Man, I'm from Southwest Atlanta, but you know I went to Kyle Heights Elementary, sir. So you didn't go to Kyle Heights? Yeah, I went to Kyle Heights, okay, man. Okay, okay. What about the Flatland made you, make it have to, uh, made you have to write a song about it? And what were some of the lessons that you learned from there coming Oh, up? man, you, you can, you must, you will. You can do it. You must do it. You will do it. You black, that ain't no excuse. You know from Kyle they pour such confidence Yeah, in. they loved us. Yeah, like, you know, and even when they were starring on you, it was from a place of you can do it. It wasn't there. It wasn't even encouraging. It was demanding. When you hear about black life amongst most men of our age group, yeah. you hear about, it's almost like who suffered the most. We have to be careful of how treacherous we describe our trail. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? Because our neighborhood was an encouraging neighborhood. Our neighborhood was one filled with old people that told you you can, you must, you will. It was filled with teachers that said you were competent, so had the confidence to do it. Come on so now. I think to me, the perfect place to grow strong, confident black children is it ha it has been for me Atlanta, and I'm, and I'm not disregarding any other beautiful black city, be it D.C. or Philly or Chicago or Detroit, you know what I mean, or Houston or Dallas, any of the cities, but there's something uniquely unique about Atlanta in which that um, I was protected from all insecurity. So by exactly. the time I got out in the world, I was confident and competent I could do it. What I get angry about sometimes, Mike, when folks represent the hood, they act like you can't be smart and come out of there and yeah. be great. And that's but when you really from there, yeah. you know who you saw in class with you. You know you saw future mayors, yeah. you saw future Absolutely. doctors, lawyers, and dentists in class with you. Yeah. And what I learned was don't judge people by some of the choices they've had to make, yeah. but learn from the choices. On, you know, a smart person learn from their choices, a wise person learn from other people's choices. Exactly. You know? So exactly. I gained a lot of wisdom. Um, a lot of old people, you know, in that neighborhood imparted wisdom on us. Even when we didn't want it, stop. I got to talk to you, tell you something. You know? <laughs> so for me, man, just my community poured so much into me. So that, much man. good, you know. And I, I just, um, I value being from the West Side. I really do. With that being said, man, let's toast to that. Genius. <laughs> Cheetos, handmade vodka. We had a great time in here. Can't wait to do it again. Love and respect you, brother. Yes, sir.